Okay, so this is a common equation that you might find on one of your college placement tests. So what we'll do is we're going to look at the question and then we're going to take it step by step in order to break it down and see how we can come up with the answer. So it says, what is the solution to the equation? One third x plus four third and then in parentheses x plus one minus one six equals four. So when I first start this problem, I like to just rewrite it here so I can have more space in order to do it. So 4 thirds x plus 1 minus 1 6 equals 4. And then I look at this and I see fractions. Now, when I see fractions in an equation, I try to eliminate the fractions as soon as possible because fractions can be a little bit confusing when working with them multiplying by fractions, adding fractions, subtracting fractions, dividing by fractions, it can get a little complicated. So I'm gonna show you a way that we can get rid of all the fractions in this equation and then just work with whole numbers. But before that can happen, we just have to take care of the parentheses. So 4 thirds is outside of x plus one. What that means is we have to distribute it. So anytime you have a number three, outside of parentheses x plus 2 you distribute that 3 meaning you multiply by everything that's inside the parentheses so we're going to go ahead and do that with this 4 thirds so we're going to do 4 thirds times x which is 4 thirds x and then we're going to do 4 thirds times 1 which is just 4 thirds now that we took care of that parentheses we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring down everything else bring down everything else okay so now we have these fractions and we want to get rid of them so the way that we get rid of these fractions is we look at the denominators so the denominators is the bottom number on each of the fractions so the denominator is three in this situation and then another denominator is six so we take three and six and we just try to find the multiples of three and six so multiples just means you're counting by that number. So counting by the number three would be three, six, nine, 12. Let's go up to 15. And then the multiples of six would be counting by six. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna find the least common multiple between three and six. So we found the multiples of each number now we're gonna see what numbers are common or which numbers appear in both lists. So it looks like six appears in both lists and 12 appears in both lists. Okay, so out of the numbers that are common, which number is the least or the smallest number? So between six and 12, the number that is the least would be six. So we found the least common multiple of three and six, which is six. That is gonna be the number that we multiply this entire equation by. We're gonna multiply both sides, everything in this equation by six. And what will happen is, as we're multiplying each fraction by the number six and each piece, the fractions are just gonna disappear one at a time. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. We're gonna multiply six by every piece that's inside. So we're gonna do six times one third. Six times one third. I'm gonna put six over one. And then when you're multiplying fractions, you just multiply the tops times the bottoms. So it'd be six times one is six. One times three is three. Six over three is the same as saying six divided by three. And six divided by three is two. So six times one third x is two x. Okay, so now we're gonna do six times four third x. So we're gonna do six over one times four over three. Multiply the tops over multiplying the bottoms. Six times four is 24. One times three is three. 24 over three is the same as saying 24 divided by three. And that's gonna be equal to eight. So it's gonna be eight x. Then we're gonna do six times four thirds. We already figured out that that was eight, so we're just gonna put eight. And then we're gonna do six times negative one six. So now we're gonna do six times negative one six. We'll put this over one. We're just gonna to do tops multiplied by the bottoms. 
So 6 times negative 1 over 1 times 6. So that's negative 6 over 6. That's the same as 6 divided by 6. And that's equal to negative 1. So we have negative 1. And then we just have to make sure that we multiply everything by 6. So we're also going to multiply 4 times 6. And that is equal to 24. So now, if you look at the equation, I'm going to erase some of this so that you can see it. If you look at the equation, we eliminated all of the fractions, so there are no more fractions in the equation. So if you eliminate the fractions in the beginning, then you won't have to use them ever again. So you won't have to divide by the fractions. You won't have to multiply by fractions. They all have disappeared. Again, the way that we found the number to multiply them by is finding the least common multiple of both denominators. So it was 3 and 6. When we found out the least common multiple was 6, we took that 6 and we multiplied everything in the entire equation by 6. And one out of a time, those fractions just disappeared. The one thing I just will tell you to remember is please remember to multiply everything by the number 6 including any whole numbers in the fraction. Okay, so now we have a simpler equation. It's now 2x plus 8x plus 8 minus 1 equals 24. So what do we do here? Before we can go ahead and solve for x, we have to combine like terms. What does that mean to combine like terms? Well, any terms that are similar to one another that can be added together can be combined. So 2x plus 8x, those are like terms because they both have a number next to an x to the same power. That's x's first power. So 2x plus 8x is 10x. And then we're going to go ahead and combine 8 minus 1. Those are like terms because they're both just numbers. So 8 minus 1, that's plus 7, and then equals 24. So now that we've combined like terms, we can go ahead and solve for x. The way that we solve for x is we're trying to get the x by itself. That's going to be the goal. So when we're trying to get the x by itself, we just want to say, why is the x not by itself right now? So there's two numbers that is causing the x to not be by itself, the 10 and the 7. So we're going to eliminate the number 10 and we're going to eliminate the number 7. Well, how do you decide which number to eliminate first? Well, first, you eliminate the number that's not attached to the x, then you eliminate the number that is attached to the x. So the number that's not attached to the x is the 7. How do you eliminate the 7? You have to figure out what is happening now so that you can do the opposite. So right now, the 7 is being added. So to get rid of the 7, you have to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. So I subtract 7 from both sides. So we'll be left with 10x, the 7s will cancel each other out, and then you're left with 24 minus 7. So what is 24 minus 7? That's going to be 17. Okay, so now we have to get rid of the 10. How do we get rid of the 10? Well, you have to figure out what's happening now so that you can do the opposite. Well, right now, because the 10 and the x are written so close to one another, they're being multiplied. And that's something that you should try to remember. Anytime you see a number written next to a letter or a variable, they are being multiplied. There's an invisible multiplication symbol in between them. So if right now they're being multiplied, in order to get rid of it, you have to do the opposite of multiplication, which is what? Division, good job. So we're gonna divide both sides by 10. The tens are going to cancel each other out, and you're going to be left with x is equal to 17 over 10. Now, 17 over 10 is the same as saying 17 divided by 10, and you can go ahead and figure out what decimal that is, but you can also make sure that you look at the answer choices, and you can say, are the answer choices in decimal form or are they in fraction form? Fortunately for this one, they're in fraction form, so you can leave it as 17 over 10, so the answer is going to be D. All right, so I'm hoping that this question helped you guys out. Um, I'm actually in the process of making a practice test with more examples like this. This is one of the questions on my practice test. So once I'm finished putting that test together for you guys, 
I'm going to put the link to the practice test um, in this description box. So when it's ready for you guys, you'll be able to come back to this video and you should be able to see it in the description box. I hope this question has helped you guys and please just stay tuned for more.